It is the last game of the season at Chase Field. They hope, though, that it's not the final game that their team plays. The Texas Rangers have taken a 3-1 series lead. They are one win away from the first championship in franchise history. We welcome inside. That's the Hall of Famer John Smoltz. I'm Joe Davis. So these Diamondbacks have been shocking people all season long. They once again face elimination. If they're going to get this series back to Texas, John, how do they do it? Well, it's not about cliches. It's not about our backs are up against the wall. We got nothing to lose. You know what it's about? It's about executing the things you were good at that make you special. And for Zach Gallen, he just needs to be the normal Zach Gallen. He doesn't need to pitch perfect. He needs to do what he did at home. Very comfortable at home. Pitch on the corners of the strike zone. Command his fastball. He's going to have a short leash. He knows that. But he doesn't have to be spectacular. He just has to be good at what he does well. Arizona 7 0 this season wins scoring first in the postseason and a huge part of this game toward the Velo set is jumping out in a hurry on the other side Corey Seager two years ago signed the largest contract in franchise history that comes with big expectations he has exceeded those and he's the biggest reason why they're this close absolutely and you see this every year the, the stars come out and you have to neutralize them for Texas it's been about Seager now it's going to be about the collective group you see what the numbers are and how unbelievable he's been if you're the Diamondbacks you cannot pitch to him anymore under circumstances that might drive in runs so the rest of the lineup is going to have to carry the freight because he has been doing it to this point. Yeah, it was amazing yesterday Garcia goes down they still explode for 11 runs the game never really was in question as Corey Seager did his thing once again. The Texas Rangers launched in 1972 their manager was Ted Williams. They've waited this long and this is a franchise that's been close before they will not celebrate until the last out is caught. Diamondbacks trying to further their frustrations but will it happen after a half century will the Texas Rangers bring home the hardware. We've got first pitch game five of the World Series next on Fox. Life's a little different for me nowadays. And you could say the same for the Rangers and D-backs. Who have endured their own battles to get here and are now racing to become a world champion. Which makes this a very intriguing World Series. Like swimming, this game can be decided by the thinnest of margins. Each lap, a battle between yourself and your opponent. Smashes up. Counter punch, comebacks. Good again. Twists and turns. And for those who can rise to the occasion, gold awaits. Could tie it with one swing. High drive. Goodbye. Legend. Great. Corey Seager does it again. Sit back and enjoy. It's game five of the World Series. Oh, Phoenix native and an expert at winning championships. Michael Phelps getting us going with the 2023 World Series on Fox presented by Capital One. Just about set for game five. We go to the field. Here's Ken Rosenthal. Thanks, Joe. The night Nathan Evaldi closed out the division series, Chris Young's wife Liz turned to him and said, I guess Christmas Eve was worthwhile. Young, the Rangers GM, negotiated Evaldi's free agent contract up until 1130 that night and Liz wasn't happy about it. Well, Ivaldi proved quite the gift. For his career, he is 3-0 with a 1.42 ERA in postseason clinchers, and if he comes up big tonight, he could deliver an early Christmas present to Rangers fans everywhere. The team's first World Series title. Now over to Tom Verducci. Thanks, Ken. Well, one of the most impactful free agents signed by Chris Young has two artificial hips an artificial knee and a cranky case of sciatica. Young told Bruce Bochy, I'm not hiring you because I love playing for you, but to establish a winning culture. 12 months later, Bruce Bochy at age 68 is back on the doorstep of history. He could become the sixth manager with a fourth World Series title, the first with multiple teams. If the game is in the hands of his bullpen, if the game is close, if the game means closing out a series, as this one does, Bruce Bochy has a knack of finding a way to win. Joe. 
Tom Bruce is happy as could be living in Nashville spending a lot of time with his grandkids but then he started to get the itch again. He went and managed the French national team in the WBC qualifiers and he said you know what I think I want to give this one more shot. And so Chris Young calls him. Little did he know Bo was waiting for somebody to call. He was ready for another challenge and he wasn't going to do it if he didn't think it was a team that was ready to win. Here he has them one win away from their first world championship. And he would be the first to tell you that it's not about him. It's about the players. And how about his star players at the top of the order? Marcus Simeon and Corey Seager have knocked in 10 of the 14 runs in the two games here in Phoenix. Then it's the rookie Evan Carter. Mitch Garber bats out of the cleanup spot. DHs. Josh Young's coming off a three hit game. Then it's low and Heim. Leone Tavares trying to snap an 0 for 19 skid. And Travis Jankowski in his first start of the postseason. Two hits last night. Playing in right field in Adolis Garcia's spot. Tonight's fan duel live, same game parlay. Need Mitch Garber to record an RBI. He actually has more RBIs than anybody on the Rangers outside of Garcia. And Tommy Pham, who homered against Zach Gant or against Nathan Avaldi in the first game, need him to hit a home run. John, you pitched in seven elimination games in your career to the tune of a two ERA. What's the path forward for Zach Gallon tonight? The path is not on my watch, right? You know you're going to have a short leash. And the one thing he's got to go back to is his fastball command. That's what makes him special. you got to be able to use your secondary pitches and just have a feel. If your RPM and your velocity starts going through the roof, you know that you're a little bit too amped up. Look, both teams have opposite feelings. Arizona left spring training. They're not ready to end their season yet. Texas has been waiting for this a long time. They want this to be the last game. We'll see who executes early, and I would throw out this key. Arizona needs a couple scoreless innings early so they can jump out and get the lead and keep this crowd going. And they have not scored a run over the first three innings in the two games here. The crowd's been taken out of it. The umpiring crew for game five will line up this way. Brian Knight calls balls and strikes. The crew chief Bill Miller at first base. So 11-7 Texas yesterday. You talk about taking the crowd out of it. Five runs in the second, five runs in the third. Now one went away from their first World Series title. Now can Arizona keep this dream season alive and send the series back to Texas? Well, another thing to look for is in the first three, four innings, the lighting will be the best it's going to be in this ballpark. Texas scored 10 in the first three. They only scored one after that. And you've seen what they have done when they put up a crooked number. So the key, Simeon's getting hot, and you got to pitch around Seeger. So here we go. Simeon stands in. Zach Gallen, the game one starter, takes the ball, trying to keep his team season going. Off we go with a fastball outside. You're going to be looking for that velocity. Where's that at? You're going to be looking for the location on. Yeah, outside this, right on the lines of the strike zone, right? The vertical lines, you want to be on those path lanes to have success because Texas doesn't chase much. Well, and you might think, hey, I want to see, you know, this power fastball, but that's not him when he's right. Fastball command is his number one quality. And when he's right, he's as good as anybody. Gallon to Simeon with a 2-0. There's a strike right in the corner. Marcus Simeon, who had knocked in just two runs over the first 14 games of this postseason, has driven in six the last two. Homered and tripled yesterday. Flies this one. Into center field for Alec Thomas. One of the things to be watching for for Zach Gallon today is going to be this changeup working in this direction. He wants it fading away, and if he's got that pitch fading away, he has the chance to neutralize Seeger. They're going to try to pound him in with cutters, use the breaking ball away and the changeup away. Target set away. Seeger takes that changeup out there. And that pitch has got to have tremendous feel. He's a field pitcher. We've talked to his manager, and they said he's connected with the baseball, and when he is, no one's better. Corey Seeger has once again owned the biggest stage. Home runs at four of his last five games, six in the World Series in his career.
Gillen shakes a couple times, chooses this for a 1 1 pitch. Pinpoint fastball, strike two. So now, off of that pitch right there, I think you, sh you can come back with a changeup or a breaking ball away. They've got his eyes focused over there. So look for this fastball height, a perfect opportunity if he wants to back it up with a changeup. Here he comes. It is a breaking ball that's pulled down the line. Foul. Now that breaking ball was supposed to start away and miss over the top. That's where you'll get a swing and miss. But right now, Seeger has not missed anything over the middle of the plate. There's the breaking ball. See how it pops out of his hand? Too close to the inside part of the plate. He is punished just about everything he's got in his zone. There is the changeup. There is Perdomo. There's the second out. So far, so good, Joe. When, the, when he didn't hit his first two fastballs to Simeon, he didn't overthrow the next couple. This game will play with your mind in a way as a pitcher that you say, I can't allow a runner. That's not true. I can't allow a run. That's not true. Just make them solo runs. Stay away from the beginning. Evan Carter, two gone first in. Now the crowd would have struck, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Right? Exactly, because that's the tendency. It's like, oh, we got no room for error. You actually do. You just don't have room for the big number in the inning that the Rangers have absolutely flexed their muscles this postseason with. Yeah, best big explosion offense throughout the regular season, again here in the postseason. Zach Gallon and out of way, though, from setting the tone with a first inning zero. And the other thing you do is you look at these numbers. That's just unbelievable. And the other thing you do, you look at the lineup, and you've already circled in your mind a couple guys you know you can go to if you're in trouble, and you've got to go to those guys that execute. It's not a disrespect to those guys. It's just that you're matched up better against them. How about against Carter? He doubled against him twice in game one. Yes, Carter, he's trying to elevate his eyes, and then he wants to get him to swing over the top of a breaking ball over the middle of the plate. He beat him with two fastballs last time. That's the pitch right there. And now he can take that and even start it over the middle of the plate and let it drop down to the bottom. When you see the opportunity of a guy that is so disciplined, you've got to make it look like a strike, and you've got to end it up down over the plate. Carter takes time. What Merrill Kelly did is he he counterpunched this great offense by throwing strikes early and then then you could start making him change and swing outside the zone. He's able to go seven innings in their long win in this series. And there it Gallons is. go one, two, three, first. Perfect pitch. of the lineup looks like this. Marte and Moreno. Then in the heart of the order, it's Walker, Pham, and Gurriel who went deep in last night's game. And it's homer twice against Nathan Evaldi. Thomas Longoria's back in there. And Geraldo Perdomo at short hitting nine. Against the 33-year-old from Melvin, Texas, Nathan Evaldi. He's made five starts this postseason, and Texas has won them all. Yeah, he's very aggressive with his fastball. He's a strike thrower. I don't think that's going to change. He's got to have an improve on his uh, curveball and split, which was a little off in his last game. Oh. That was in game one. Doesn't get the call here on a first pitch curve. He gave up five runs over four and two-thirds. It was the shortest outing of this postseason because he had just been cruising. Right of the Diamondbacks getting to him a little bit. His 1 0 to Corbin Carroll is upstairs. What they want to do to Carroll is they want to get his eyes up in the zone, right? They want it right here, up, and then they want to be able to get that split down there. Outside. Drilled a splitter that was a little bit up for a triple in game one against Steve Aldi. Yeah, on two strikes. But they've got to get the ball up and in to keep him struggling. If not, if he gets going, which he did in Philadelphia, good signs for Arizona. He All takes four, the four. walk on four pitches, and you got the speed of Corbin Carroll aboard right away. Something that's been missing in the two games here in Phoenix. Very much missing. And look, a lot of pressure on that young man. He's only a rookie, really, a true rookie. And but the team runs and goes through him. The guy at the plate's probably their best star clutch guy as far as the moment, but the one that can make the most happen is standing at first base. After they stole five bases over the first two games of this series, after they ran wild against Philadelphia in game six and seven, they don't have one in the two games here. 
There goes Carroll for his pitch. Throw from high. Not in time. He swipes second. Fifty-four stolen bases in the regular season. He's got his first of the fall classic. Not the greatest jump, but good speed. And he was able to beat the throw, a good throwing catcher. And now Marte's job is to drive a ball somewhere to at least get him to third, preferably drive him in and get this raucous crowd, which was unbelievable yesterday, invested in the game all game. Marte lays a ball down. Tori Lovello did tell us before the game today, I'm going to manage that first inning like one run could win a championship. I'm going to do everything I can to get a run in, even if that means a guy who's been their best hitter this postseason needs to move a runner over. Yeah, the only problem with that is that was a bunt for a base hit on an 0-1 count. Now he's dug himself a hole 0-2 and really has to get into protect mode. If that would have been 1-0, I kind of like it, but now he's got to really dig deep on a split finger. Got to it, moved him up. Job done by Marte. Kill the third. You watch what that bench does when Marte gets. That's one of the best at bats that will not be recorded because it's an out. But he moves the runner over, and on a nasty split, he does exactly what he has to do. That is great hitting, and the team will respect that. Different swings for different situations. Tell Marte is able to advance Carroll to third. So they get a walk, a stolen base, and a productive out. And face a drawn in infield here with one gone and a scoreless first inning. Gabby Moreno, strike one on a cutter. Moreno went into last night's game one for 13 in this World Series, and then he was right in the middle of it in that late rally. Now they still fell well short. They're hoping to build off of the momentum, though, that late inning offense. On an 0-1, Moreno takes low. How real is that? How real is that the six runs in the eighth and the ninth inning yesterday can mean something today? Oh, I think it's big. I mean, people are on the other side are going to say, what's, you know, change the pitching lineup and all that. No, it's big. Confidence carries over when you haven't had much, especially to this point. Ground ball to short, and Seager's there. Drawn in infield, cuts it off. Carroll still at third, two out. Now, having said that, what killed their confidence yesterday was this very situation. Two outs, and they got 10 runs. The Diamondbacks need a two-out hit. They need something to go their way to create momentum. They'll even take a wild pitch, but a two-out hit would be huge for their confidence. It's a ball on Christian Walker. There's nobody more in need of some series extending redemption than Christian Walker who is so excellent during the regular season has struggled in the postseason and then it's gone from bad to worse here he had the base running error in game three he had the fielding error last night that led to five unearned runs can he get him on the board in the first inning of game five one ball one strike he did have three hits yesterday but it seemed like any time he's made a step forward, there's been that bad step back. The guy with 33 home runs in the regular season. Carolyn third, two out. Walker swings and misses at the high fastball. Baldy has made pitches when he had to in this whole series, and he elevates the fastball up. And then he has been using the splits against right handers at their back foot. So on the arm side of plate, he throws a split with two strikes. He did that quite often against Walker. Sends it foul, stays alive. And Nathan Avaldi, not just in this series, but throughout this season, the best pitcher in the American League with runners in scoring position. Carroll at third, two out, another one two from Nathan Avaldi. Drifts inside. There's that righty righty splitter that he lays off. Yeah, what makes it so tough, right, is if you're trying to catch up to 97, which he's fouled off a couple up, and then you see something over the middle of the plate, your eyes get huge, and that one obviously floated. He could he could recognize it. But if that pitch is down at the belt 
or the knees of the catcher, it's hard to stay off of it. On 2-2, two -two, he shoots a fastball foul. Swatting it off the outside corner. Thirty two years old one of the longest tenured Diamondbacks he's here for the low years year after year of missing the postseason. In the middle of it here in game five Carroll at third two out and another two two for Rivaldi. Walker oh. with a great take to work the count full. Yeah, that was a great take this was an outstanding pitch two two action pitch normally get the guy to swing at it now if you're thinking that he goes away with the breaking ball will he come down and in with the split on three two eighth pitch ball four we've already had walked four batters all postseason coming into this outing that's his second walk of the first. And now John it's Tommy Pham coming to the plate Pham golfed a splitter out for a home run in game one. Yeah and what as a pitcher you can't let the hitter know you're going to eliminate that pitch just just because he hit that pitch for a homer. I would anticipate that Evaldi is going to throw him that pitch because it's still a swing and miss pitch that one he left up for a homer in Texas. First and third two out Tommy Pham had a fastball over the plate and sent it foul. This is that home run game one of the World Series part of an eight for 16 effort for a guy who was benched just a couple games before he's been their best hitter in this World Series. Yeah first at bat he went fastball splitter splitter swing swing strikeout and that at bat you saw what happened when the splitter was hung. On this 0 one he hits it hard Seeger is short with a backhand play goes to second and gets him out of the inning. Diamondbacks unable to take advantage of the leadoff walk and no score after one in game five. T-Mobile wants you to win tickets to a game next season. Text predict the 595959 by the start of the third inning for a chance to up your game. Zach Gallen's probably going to finish top five in Cy Young voting for a second consecutive year, but in this postseason, he's got a 5.27 ERA. You may look at that and say, "Well, he's got to get back to that All Star and Cy Young contending form." But yes, Tori Lavello, and he says, "Look, we don't need you to be Hercules. We need you to just give us a chance to get our footing in this game." Hello. Worked the one, two, three first inning. Just misses with his first pitch to Mitch Garver here. He's done a nice job already with his curveball and that's going to be the key because that's a built in change of speeds off of his fastball. There it right is right there and that when you have a feel for that pitch it's almost a free strike that you can get back into the count and obviously it's a swing and miss pitch when you've got two strikes. Barber who has homered against Galen before. Oh man that fastball he's got working. When you have glove side command with a fastball against the right hander now that makes your cutter curveball that much more deadly the hitter has to respect that side of the plate. The one two curveball disappears having to respect that fastball chases the curve and Gallon has his second K. I know pitching can be very compliment complicated and there's all kinds of information but it can be as easy as fastball command serves you well for everything else it sets up. What a hitter doesn't want is he doesn't want you to command one side of the plate because now he has to think about too many things coming into play. Four up and four down for Zach Gallon. Comes home to Josh Young. Outside. That just misses. Josh Young three hits last night without Adolis Garcia. Did he figure with them pitching around Corey Seager a little more carefully? Can it be Young again to step up for him? Up the middle he goes for Domo on one bounce. Two. And now it's Nathaniel Lowe who Gallon has owned. He has. Nathaniel Lowe really hasn't made. He's done a better job. He's going the other way primarily. When I see that, I'm going to throw a lot of fastballs to a hitter who has yet to show me he can hit a fastball to the pool side and especially up. 
Chops first one that he sees to second. Backs Marte into the grass, and he throws him out. Finish it off for one, two, three, second. We are off and rolling in game five, and Zach Gallen is cruising. The Pitcher Profile is sponsored by Google Pixel. We've got two of the best big game pitchers we've ever seen in the building tonight. John Smoltz, number two on that list of the highest winning percentages in postseason history, and a guy who you might not think of right away, but Nathan Avaldi has made his case as one of the best big game pitchers of this generation. Yeah, he has the heartbeat of it, and he certainly wants to be in the moment and is not afraid of the moment. That's two of the biggest keys. And you know he's got the stuff the stuff helps but sometimes stuff is not enough if you can't harness it and he's shown this postseason he has been tough tough to beat. Facing Lourdes Gurriel starting this second and quickly ahead of him on two his pitching coach Mike Maddox said that he is built for the postseason because he's got three things he's a great preparer you know he's going to be ready he's a great executor pretty simple you go out there and execute the plan and he's gutsy. Mike says he's a walking postseason check mark. Yeah, regular season. I'm not saying that those things don't exist for him, but it becomes hyper focused this time of the year. Ground ball, base hit center field. Lotus going out, open the second. So the leadoff man on both innings. Tonight's telecast is sponsored by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Celebrate now in the pool after the division series win over the Dodgers. Part of this improbable run for the Arizona Diamondbacks. The last team into the field at 84 wins. Two comeback wins in Milwaukee. Swept the 100 win Dodgers. Came back to beat the Phillies. Alec Thomas grounds it foul. Now Thomas had back to back multi hit games in the two games in Texas, but he's hitless in his two games here. Yeah, very aggressive swinger. That's why he throws off speed all three times now. The first pitch has been off speed. Then they'll elevate the fastball, try to crowd him up and in. Nice splitter right there. Split finger had late, late movement. Home with an 0-2. It is a Inside. fastball that just misses. So perfectly executed so far have been both pitchers, and aside from the four-pitch walk, really of all the settled down and prevented the first run from scoring. We talked to it till we're numb here. Whoever scores first has been undefeated. I don't think I've ever seen that this deep. No way, I've never seen it. Uh, two teams to get to this point and to continue it, right? That's uh, it took a pretty incredible comeback for the Rangers to keep that streak alive in their win back in Texas. So game one, you know, to think Arizona was that close to taking 1 0 series lead. Somehow got to this, bounced it up the middle. Seagulls only play is at first, and Guriel's in the scoring position. Well, if you want to see why it's so hard to have the differential between fastball and split, if you're sitting at home and you think you can hit this and you know what it is, good luck. And that thing disappears. It comes out of the same lane and it has almost the same kind of reaction when you release it. But then all of a sudden the ball on the split finger side just dips and drops. And the hitter has very little time to figure that out. Out of that pitch several years ago, he's thrown it more and more and it has been a transformative pitch. For the 33 year old who faces Evan Longoria. And Longoria yanks the line drive to left field. Then Carter comes on to get. Evan Carter takes a hit away from Longoria. Two gone in the second. Defense, defense, defense. This has been a series filled with good plays and game changing plays because that would have been a game changer if it gets by Carter and it gets a run in for the D back. So early on, you couldn't ask for a better start for the pitcher. You got your offense and runners in scoring position in the first two innings. Now you need the big hit. 
And you've got a guy up here who may be the nine hitter, but is near the top of the list. The guys that Tori Lavello wants in the big spot. Toronto Perdomo hitting 423 over an eight game hitting streak. Yeah, a lollipop of a curve for a strike. Excellent finishing touch to this breakout season for him. One of the worst hitters in baseball last year to an all star this year. A key component in the nine spot. Swings and misses. Perfect splitter. Chances in both innings for the Diamondbacks. Lead off man on in both innings. Rivaldi trying to escape it again as 0 2 is very high. Guriel doesn't run a ton, but he can get a gigantic lead. There is no one going to care if he goes to third base. The shortstop, you can see Seeger way, way behind him. Get as big a lead as you can and go on contact. 1 2. Well, well. Took it this time, and it's 2 and 2. Those are the little things that the Diamondbacks pride themselves on taking the extra 90 feet getting good secondary leads being aggressive. Part of their fifth at bat with a runner in scoring position here in game five looking for their first hit. 2 2 for Domo fouls it off nope. and stays alive. Uncharacteristically, he walked the leadoff hitter. Uncharacteristically, in the second inning, 0 2 fastball, base hit. But characteristically, it's tough when runners are in scoring position. One of the best. Bigger the game, bigger the spot, the better he's been throughout this season, throughout the last few years. And the guy that Knew all those things and envisioned moments like this. Maybe not this soon, but brought him in with a big game reputation. He has fortified that this postseason. Now trying to pitch him to their first title. Is 2-2 to Perdomo. Is high and tight, and the count is full. Well, based on the way that he throws his split, you would think that'd be a pitch to throw right here, 3-2 on an aggressive count. Carol waits on deck. Here's the payoff. It is lofted down the line. Jankowski's there, and Avaldi's out of it again. Diamondbacks through two innings, 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position. Pitch hit and run is the free official MLB skills competition for baseball and softball players ages 7 to 14. You can host a local competition next year. Give the kids a chance to get to the national finals at next year's World Series. Go to pitchhitrun.com. Jonah Heim starts the inning. One pitch. One out for Zach Gallon, who's retired the first seven. Done a nice job, and that's what you can ask for. Come out of the gate. Give your team. A good feeling that your ace is on this game. Leo de Tavares comes up and we go down to the Arizona dugout. Tom Verducci's got Tori Lovello. Yeah, Tori, it's seven outs for Zach Gallon, 21 pitches. Tell me what you like so far. The way he's attacking the zone, you know, looks like he's down, uh, down at the bottom of the zone, hitting those lines that I was talking about earlier with you guys. Offensively, you've had five knocks on the door with runners in scoring position, haven't kicked it in yet. But the quality of the bats, what do you think? So far, so good. You know, we're gonna, clearly there's there's a tone that we're trying to set here. We did that. We put ourselves in a position to score some runs. We just got to keep pounding away at it. Thanks, Tori. Thank you, Tom. Tori's message to the team today, one battle, one pitch at a time, one at bat at a time, one game at a time. They hope the Outside. path back to becoming the seventh team to overcome a 3-1 deficit in the World Series to win it all. Cubs in 2016. The last team to do it. On a 2 1 pitch, poked foul, 2 and 2. And if there's any team that has turned everything on its head and defied logic this year, it's been these Diamondbacks. They've had that kind of carefree attitude where it's like, hey, nobody thinks we have a chance. Let's just go play our game, have some fun, see where we land. 
trying to hold that persona and hold that method. Again, facing elimination. Here are the six teams that have pulled it off. Now, the one common theme in all those game fives has been dominant pitching. Those six teams gave up a total of 10 runs in their game five at the beginning of the comeback. 2 2. Fly to center field. Thomas going back. One center fielder to another. Two out. Well, before I forget, because the last four years, been enjoying doing the World Series, but I want to wish my daughter Rachel a happy birthday today. I've done my part. I miss her, and uh, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Rachel. No score in this third inning. With two gone. It's Travis Jankowski. Grounds the first one that he sees up the middle. There is Perdomo. And on seven pitches, a one, two, three, third inning. He's perfect once through the lineup, and he's got the top of the order coming up for his D backs. Corbin Carroll to lead it off when you come back. Game five, 3 1 series lead for the Rangers. Top of the order coming up for Arizona. After a four pitch walk, I would be leery about an aggressive Carroll here on the first pitch. Let's see what Evaldi and how they attack him after walking him on four pitches. Does the electric rookie have one more jolt in him? Round ball, center field base hit. Goes after the first one, and he's aboard for the second time. He swipes second in the very next pitch when he reached in the first inning. Well, just what I thought, and he got it right up the middle. And again, Arizona's putting pressure on the team that they were hoping to put pressure on a lot more often. It hasn't happened, but right now, you almost feel like this is their inning. They've had two chances. And that dugout is waiting to kind of have some high fives. Arte had a productive out his first time. Move Carroll to third. Here he takes a splitter low. He started his postseason career in record fashion. A 20 game hitting streak. That's the longest hitting streak in postseason history, period. We're not talking just to start a postseason, period. This team full of young stars. It's the 30 year old in his ninth year that's been their consistently best bat. On a 1 0 from Evolve. There's ball two. See what you do now. Even though he may not steal in this at bat, he's caused Evolve to speed up. Now he can get the ball to the plate quick, but the first two pitches now have put the D backs in a perfect scenario 2 0 count for the hitter. All the while, a threat of a stolen base. Dancing around, not going. Ball three, has to back to first. How do you make a team play fast and create chaos? Well, this inning, this is what they've done. Lead off batter's reach. You get a couple opportunities in runners to scoring position. Obviously, that's got to get a little bit better. But the more pressure you can put on a great pitcher, the better your chances are of scoring runs. Evaldi's 3 0. There goes Kirk. There's ball four. And the first two have reached in this third. Single for Carroll. Walk from Marte. <laughs> Man, Arizona's in business again. Can they cash in this time? Here comes Moreno. Now, the other thing to watch the pressure at second because Carroll can steal third. Actually, some great steal base dealers think stealing third is easier than stealing second. With first and second, nobody out. That's the other thing, and that's what Mike Maddox is going to come out and remind Evaldi of these scenarios. While he does, we get a quick word from Capital One. We need a clutch hit. Derek Jeter. Hang in there, rookie. Well, they're not going to have Derek Jeter in this clutch spot, but they are going to have the 23-year-old Gabby Moreno, who has been awesome in big spots this postseason. He has. He's not been great in first pitch scenarios. He likes to take the first pitch. Will he come out of that mode right here and be aggressive? He's got one of the lowest batting averages on first pitch when he goes at, after it. But what a time to come out and make a splash if you think you're going to get one. He's the youngest catcher in the World Series, youngest starting catcher in the World Series since Buster Posey's first World Series in 2010. Zach Gallon says he might be 23, but it feels like he's 33. Speed on the bases. 
zeros on the scoreboard. Vivaldi throws. Action. He lays it down. Along first. Perfectly done. Runners to second and third. First sacrifice spot of the year for Moreno, who's going to fit right in with his D-backs team. It's done it more than any other. Well, I saw his eyes when he came to the plate. He looked <laughs> both places to where to put the bunt down, and he saw the opportunity to push it towards first base, which was a great opportunity now with second and third, nobody out, or one out to create a run. Second and third, you got to play the infield back. Man on third, you can play the infield in. It's Walker. That's all. Curveball, 1 0. Walker fell behind his first time and then drew a walk. Led the team with 103 knocked in during the regular season. Stop by Hine, 2 0. Playing goalie back there. Now the only position other than the pitcher you do not want to hit the ball to would be a hard ground ball to third. A ground ball to short, you're winning one nothing. A ground ball to second, you're winning two to nothing because there's nobody at second. He's up the middle. But they've got him positioned the way they're going to pitch him, so likely he hits the ball on the ground to the left. Does, but foul, and it's two and one. Three innings, three chances. Can Christian Walker redeem himself before time runs out in the D-back season? Two one. Two and two. And the ball to hunt the strike out here. Been able to get out of these jams time and again. What's he going to here on a 2 2 to Walker? Well, he's shown the ability to slow it down with his off speed, right? He can throw his curveball or his split. There's that split. Really good adjustment by Walker. At this point, with two strikes now, all you're thinking about is contact to shortstop. I mean, these situations play out so many times in the regular season and I would argue most hitters still are selfish to try and get a three run homer and try to get a hit right now you got to get the run in another 2 2 pitch Walker's down on strikes fastball blown by him two gone I mean this is after a split he throws a fastball right down the middle right down the middle 97. So you get him in between and you get him well a little bit out of third you get him guessing a little bit and wow what a job just what a attack job. and now fam with two out. ground ball to short and Seeger's got it and they again waste an opportunity Nathan Avaldi escapes once more. Chance after chance over the first three innings of this game. Still looking for their first run, though. On to the fourth we go. Second look at Zach Gallen for this Texas lineup. Marcus Simeon leads it off. And pulls the first one. Left side. Diving stop for Dumbo. Heck of a play. On both ends. Getting some help from Walker. I mean, seriously. <laughs> That play right there. That's a top play in the World Series. The leadoff runner gets on. You face Seeger. Wow. Now here's the big inning for Gallon. You know they say when a team scores runs, you, you got to shut down inning. Yeah. But you also have to do the opposite when your team should have scored. And they don't. <laughs> two pitches, two outs ain't gonna hurt, is it? You know what I'm saying? Because they've totally. lost the momentum battle in this series. And that has flipped the script and why last night's dugout was so down and out because they were playing a tough game and they made a couple mistakes and then it blew open. So, so far so good as far as dealing with the emotional roller coaster of being down three games to one. Two outs on two pitches in this fourth inning for Zach Gallon. 
He's only thrown 29 pitches total. That's outside ball one on Evan Carter. This looks like a different guy. He looks very in control of all of his pitches, right? I mean, you just <laughs> 13, Jeez. 7, 7, 3, and possibly 5. He can get out of here in 5. And I, and I said to you on the way here, I said, if I see 97 miles an hour, I'm actually going to be more concerned because now that means he's revved up and trying to throw the ball by guys. Now he's pitching more like the season where he came out was 10 and one and running away with the Cy Young. He always hit a wall and you always have a little bit of tired arm right now. He knows there's no room for that. It's been 94 95 and dotted up. Two on to Carter. Yep. 93 at the knees. Two and two. Well, his teammate Merrill Kelly showed him the blueprint. So you're going to watch your own video, but then you're going to watch his video on how he attacked the Rangers. And it's been kind of similar. Those two guys, locker mates, good buddies. Watch that blueprint. Seven innings in game two. Gallons 2 2 pitch. Full count. Struck Carter out with a curveball his first time. The payoff. Got a curve again. And with their season at stake here, Zach Gallon putting the team on his back. And getting some help from his defense, which in this World Series on both sides has been just wonderful to watch. <laughs> Baseball fans, your phone upgrade is on deck. Get the freedom to upgrade every year with Go 5G Next and up your game with T-Mobile. Very different zeros up there for these two teams. Guriel leads off. Outside. And takes outside while Zach Gallen is perfect through four innings. Nathan Avaldi's been dodging bullets right from the start. Yeah, he has. And if this were a regular season game, you would cut his workload down by already an inning because the more stress you're in, the more effort you make on pitches. Outside. It just wears you out. Well, obviously, it's the World Series. You have to worry about another start, but you keep putting that kind of pressure on a pitcher. It's hard to kind of keep getting out of those jams. Guriel singled his first time. Homer did last night's game, and his homer twice against Evaldi. On this 2 0, Guriel takes what? strike. Arizona's had the leadoff man on all three innings. 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position so far. Here's a two one. Two and two. Thomas and Longoria to follow in this inning for the Diamondbacks. Um camp presented by T-Mobile as the 2-2 comes home. It is a pop fly into left field for Evan Carter. Started back at first. Now Charles on, puts it away. Tonight's telecast is sponsored by Taco Bell. Steal a base, steal a taco is back. And by T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. So he gets the leadoff man for the first time, and Alan Thomas comes up with the bases empty. Perfect night here in Phoenix. Roof's been open for all three games. Temperature in the 70s. And these crowds have been waiting to erupt. A lot of waiting, a lot of willing. Not a whole lot of offense, though. And a one. Strike two. That's what they try to do to Thomas. Get that ball up. You know, I told you that Evaldi would rather pitch down with the fastball and use his split. But he's going to expose the top of the zone against Thomas and then the very bottom of the zone away. Home of the 0-2. Back to the bottom of the zone. This is one ball, two strikes. 
Baldy trying to win it all in the place where he started it all. He was on this mound where he made his big league debut with the Dodgers 12 years ago. More than a decade in the big leagues. He's established himself as a big game stud. His 1 2 pitch. Fouled off his foot. Ivaldi back home to Thomas with a 1 2 pitch. Splitter grounded the second for Simeon. Two up. Well, if the Diamondbacks can win this one, then Friday we'll be back in Arlington for game six of the World Series, which covers starting at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Jordan Montgomery would take it for the Rangers, and Merrill Kelly went seven innings in game two is lined up for Arizona and so while they have a 3 1 lead in this series John there's still a lot of pressure on Texas to get this done now. Oh you know, most definitely it's hard to, to finish a series right that's why everyone talks about winning the next game. Uh, don't know what and who would pitch a game seven but Texas doesn't want to think about a game seven that's why they're going to pour their resources into this game. Outside. 2 0 on Longoria. Whereas you've got your starters lined up for Arizona. And in this game, you have your high leverage bullpen guys just eager to come in. And they'll come in at the first sign of trouble because they don't have much room for error, obviously. Poked off the end of the bat, down the line. Evan Longoria drops it in, makes the turn, and has a two out double. He got robbed of a base hit his first time on a great play by Carter and left. This one he hits much more softly, but it turns into a dunk shot double. Yeah, placement always more important sometimes than exit velocity. And this placement was perfect. Four opportunities in a row now for the Rangers, or for the Rangers to get out of a, a jam here for Evaldi, but the Diamondbacks. Another guy in runners in scoring position. And how long can this go on? Another chance belongs to Perdomo. And he takes a strike. He was up there. The same situation in the second. Flight out to right. Multiple chances. Each of the first three innings. Here's an 0 1. Perdomo takes outside and the count evens. And again, just to. To reiterate that two outs, Longoria not the most fleet of foot, but he's been given the he'll be able to get a huge lead on a single and be able to go at the contact. Well, that is he takes a curve. Remember the best outfield arm in the American League, arguably, is the normal right fielder in Adolis Garcia, which we saw in Game Three of this series. He is out. Jankowski can run out there, but does not have the same arm. Carter and Tavares both decent arms. Left and center. Here's a 2 1. Fouled off, and it's 2 and 2. Mike Hazen can't stop moving. He's been pacing every time they've gotten a guy in scoring position. Waiting for the breakthrough. Evaldi's 2 2. Popped out of his hand. Carroll's on deck, and the count is full on Perdomo. Living on the edge, man. He is. One thing, again, we've seen him. He's not afraid to pound a fastball in on 3 2. He's got some big swing. Not a lot of swings and misses tonight from Evaldi, but some pretty big pitches. The payoff. Got out of it again with a fastball to the corner. It is still nothing, nothing. Nathan Avaldi out of four jams in four innings. We're back after a word from your local Fox station.
John, in game one, Zach Allen needed 86 pitches to get through four innings. Tonight he's needed 35, and that's the fewest pitches to get through four innings as far back as we can check it in the World Series. Yeah, I mean, that is great defense, strike throwing, and what you needed. I mean, he knew coming into this game, all right, got to be good. My bullpen's ready. Give us a chance to win, and he's doing that. Mitch Garver starts his fifth. One ball, one strike. When you think about a lineup, right, you think about, okay, Seeger's batting tw twice. Well, he batted in the fourth inning, and that's only happened one time in this series because he's getting up so much that you got to face him a lot more. There's another chase on that curve, which has been the transformational pitch tonight off that fastball. Yeah, we talked about it. That pitch needed an upgrade. He definitely went to work in the side session to create that pitch. He's throwing it for strikes whenever he wants, getting swing and misses. He's already thrown more of them than he did in the entire game one. Rocks and fires. Throws another, this one taken. 28 years old from Gibbsboro, New Jersey. Originally drafted by the St. Louis Cardinals. Got traded twice before he established himself. Traded to Miami and then traded to the Diamondbacks at the deadline in 2019 and has benefited from this man's presence, Brent Strong. Like so many pitchers through the years have. This D back staff was awful for years. And yeah, they got better pitchers, but they also got one of the best pitching coaches in the game in here a couple years ago. And Brent Strom. A 2 2. Now he can go back to the curveball. You know, he's been late on those fastballs. They've been center cut. He started over the middle of the plate if he wants and get that swing and a miss at the bottom of the zone. Gallon to Garver. And another foul ball. Rewarding performance is sponsored by Capital One. Talking about that curve, he's thrown it 15 times, 13 of them getting strikes. Long battle going here with Garver. It's a curve, it's hit in the air, deep left center field. Guriel's back onto the track, and this puck just big enough to hold it. So he's definitely done a good job with his fastball, and he's been on the corners of the strike zone. That's why it's been quick outs, and that's why he's been able to do what he wants to do. He's made a game plan change. We haven't seen many change-ups. We've seen the curveball that we just talked about. So he's figured out that that feel that he has for that pitch, he's riding with it, and it's working. We mentioned Brent Strom, his pitching coach, who's coached so many good ones through the years. And we're talking Verlander and Cole and Morton, others. So he's got the perspective that is outside. just outside of the ball on Young. He said other guys have had better individual pitches, but I've never had anybody with the total package that Zach Gallon has. You put a bunch of good pitches together and you get great. His one already Young. There it is. There's the changeup. I have a feeling that'll become more and more the longer he's in. He'll start getting that feel for that pitch, and that will totally mess with the hitters for the Rangers because right now they're seeing fastball command and curveballs going away from right-handed hitters. That changeup is a weapon for Gallon. When you have that many of them, you can do this as the outing yeah. goes on. Be a different guy as it goes on. One and two. Used to be a no-no to throw a right-handed pitching change up to a right-handed hitter, and that's become it because inside change-ups were never taught, and now they become such a weapon. You understand the change-up away to a lefty, but the change-up into a hit hitter actually kind of works in a way where they think it's an inside fastball and they swing over the top of it. Gallons one two pitch fastball shot foul. Josh Young coming off a three hit game yesterday all star as a rookie above 300 in his first postseason. Another one two Young golfs it deep left center field Guriel to the gap. Way back. This is good. 
over the shoulder with calm. Calling off Thomas. Smooth operator out there. Well, they may not have great arms, but they cover great territory. And that's what this team is built on, the outfield speed. And covering a lot of ground. They're all saying, wow. They've gotten a dazzling pitching performance with some help from one of the big league's best defenses tonight. Here's Lowe with two out. Ball one. Lowe grounded out his first time. One of 11 in his career against Jack Gallon. One ball, one strike. There's that changeup. Change ups to that corner, fastballs to the top of the zone. Stand down and away with a fastball. And loads ahead, two and one. Those pitches that he's throwing in an inning. It's all relative, though. Cruising along here in the fifth. Texas looking for its first base runner in game five. Check swing. No swing. Ball three. Close. Three one. Low. Awful. Takes low. And there is the first base runner. It's a two out walk for Nathaniel Low. And coming up on Sunday in America's Game of the Week, the Cowboys and the Eagles. They renew their rivalry. Four o'clock Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. And we've said it throughout this postseason, John. Two out walk in the regular season doesn't mean a whole lot. Postseason, it means everything, especially when you're facing this two out explosive offense. Yeah, the, the home run got behind going yesterday. But he has been a guy that has been struggling in the postseason. So you you continue to attack until he chose shows you something different. 13 of the 14 runs Texas has scored in this ballpark in this series have come with two out. Jonah Hine behind going two. And so now he can do whatever he wants. I've seen him bounce the curveball. He swings and misses, change up away, swings and misses. I've seen him go back up there with fastball and get a swing and miss. Extra high. Just watch the hitter if you can you know when you watch the hitter he still almost wanted to go after that pitch right so you just lower it about two three inches and he hasn't shown the ability to stay off of it yet. The one two pitch. Bounce in front of the plate that will trickle foul. Zach Gallen, who is second in the National League with 17 wins, he's third in the National League in strikeouts. Second consecutive year where he's made a push at Cy Young. Started the All Star game, but faded in the second half and has struggled in the postseason. Tor Lavella said, We don't need you to be Hercules tonight, but he has been. No hits through four and two thirds. And a game where he must win it to keep their season going. See right here, they could go inside with a fastball and maybe lock him up or give him a swing over the top of it. Oh, wow. Got him there. That was the pitch. That was the pitch for the pitcher right there. That was the one that gets the barrel just below the ball. Don't want to get him. Hand to, you don't want to get him to extend when we saw in that home run he got extended and launched it. Low at first, two out. The All Star catcher Jonah Heim on a one two. Chases strike three. Zach Gallen has fired five no hit innings in the World Series.
The 2023 World Series on Fox is presented by Capital One. No score halfway home here in game five. Nathan Avaldi has pitched out of traffic in all four innings. Top of the order in Corbin Carroll. Skies one to right field. First pitch that he sees. Travis Jankowski's there. Boy, wouldn't have already like a low stress inning. He would. And, and if you're Texas, you don't mind playing this kind of game. You know you got your horse on the mound and you're here halfway through the game. No, no score. So you know you're you're confident in your offense, even though Gallon is completely in command. Of all these matched them. And when you're pitching in a game like this, I've, I've said it before. You love pitching in this game till about the sixth inning, and then you go, okay, boys. <laughs> now we get some breathing room. Could tell Marte outside okay. ball and it seemed like for years all you pitched in were games like this in the postseason. Well because you're in rhythm right and you know the other team and you know that the other pitcher stingy and you want to do your part you get out there every 10 minutes. Nice pitch and, one you, one. and you keep telling yourself I'm just going to keep matching them keep matching them until something happens and get a lead and you start feeling a little bit better. Three hits three walks against Evaldi runner in scoring position in every inning. 0 for 7 in those spots though. Outside. Could tell Marte. On a 2 1 pitch. Ball Takes inside. Just inside. Ball three. Target was set away. Heim reaching back to the inside corner. Didn't get the call from Brian Knight. And he split. He pulls that split. You don't want that. You want it on the other side. Here's the 3 1. The angle he throws his fastball and split, the reason it's a difference maker for him now is because his fastball still had life back then, but he didn't have this kind of pitch to complement it. And it takes the pressure off his fastball when you've got that kind of movement off the same height. 12 years, first half of that injury riddled, messing with his mix, has blasted him in the back half of his career. His payoff to Marte is taken low, ball four. He had walked five all postseason coming in. He's walked four in game five. You can customize your home feed with your favorite team. Watch daily recaps, get personalized stats, highlights, breaking news every day, all on the MLB app. Download it today. Here's the interesting challenge right here. You want to pitch Moreno in. He hits a lot of ground balls when you get in on him, but if it doesn't quite get in, that's his power stroke. A lot of ground balls, about 62% on pitches inside on the ground. You're right. We saw that though. Game two one just barely leaked out over the plate and he hit it out. Hi. First season in the organization for the 23 year old over in a trade in December from Toronto. It debuted last year but was blocked by a couple good catchers in the big leagues. Future all star right here. Outside. One ball one strikeout. It's been a different team when they've had him and little did they know they would need him the way they have. He needed an injury during spring training to even make the team and take hold of the job. Had a schedule as the whole team has been. One, One ball and two strikes. Marte at first one out one two pitch in there for strike three. Wow what a pitch there. He just stayed away and painted away. And this is just late life staying down and paint. Tavaldi's third K. And it's Christian Walker with two out. Bottom of the fifth, no score here in game five. Texas with a three to one series lead. Walker sends one down the line. That's a fair ball, but Jankowski hustles over to cut off. And they're first and third with two out.
Wouldn't be right, right, if they didn't get a runner in scoring position. <laughs> five for five. Great job by Walker staying on the ball, not trying to do too much. Just shoots it down the line. I know that each time he comes up with that runner on first, that second base is played up the middle. He had to feel like that was part of his approach there. Here we go, John. You got, for the third time, Tommy Pham coming up with two out and a runner in scoring position and a chance to break through. He's been aggressive at the first pitch. Stays that way. And it's 0 1. 35 years old in his first World Series. Acquired just minutes before the deadline. They felt like this guy was the missing piece to a team they felt was close. Wanted his intensity, wanted his edge. That man traded for him. And now can hardly watch him. On an 01, Fan takes outside. Runner takes second. That's Walker without a throw. Two high stress pitches for Nathan Avaldi, who somehow has been able to put up zero after zero. Second and third, two out, and a two one pitch. Outside. Ball three on fan. Guriel's on deck. Well, base open, and Avaldi knows that. He's trying to pitch perfect away, trying to get fan to chase. Looking for that one hit. And the dirt for ball four to load the bases. Like Maddox coming out for a visit. This is unreal. Every single inning they've had opportunities. They've loaded the bases here. And yet to crack through against Ivaldi. They've been facing Guriel very interestingly off speed heavy first pitch. And now with the bases loaded, the one thing that I'm sure Mike Maddox is going out to talk to him about, he's not, again, an early first pitch success guy. But with the bases loaded, throw everything out. Base is loaded in this situation. Season on the line for Arizona. With that runner in scoring position in every inning. This is the first time they've loaded him up. But it's Lourdes Gurriel Jr. to the plate. One for two today. First pitch, bouncing ball up the middle. Seeger's there, his throw is in time, and Houdini's gotten out of another. Nathan Avaldi, five innings, constant stress, nothing but zeros. Some folks look for trouble, some look for foul belief. On both sides of the coin, you've got zeros, but on one side, constant pressure, high wire act. On the other side, Zach Gallon in a rocking chair. About 12 pitches per inning, no hits against him. And there is yet another job. First pitch out. Well, you can tell that the Rangers are trying to make something happen quick, right? They're trying to get the fastball and right do handed. something with it. But the fastball's been good and located. And that conversation right there is talking about whether Evaldi goes back out for another inning, I would imagine. 
But Zach Gallen came into this inning knowing OK if I get three guys out I don't have to face Seager with anybody on base. Jankowski's the hitter top of the order and Simeon after him. Outside one ball no strikes. Got it short his first time. Curve wraps inside ball two. Jankowski looks at ball three. You were talking the other day about, hey, you know, like you, you see Jankowski get him instead of Garcia in the lineup. You got to fight the tendency to let down. Yeah. It, it's not a, again, it's not a disrespect. It's just so much respect for Garcia that anybody else who places, replaces him, you go, Phew. And it's natural for the player that comes in really to have nothing to, to lose. It's all benefit for Jankowski, and he certainly has made the most of his. Opportunity replacing Garcia on this 3 1. Sends the ball in the air to left field for Lourdes Guriel. Two up and two down in the six. If you want to know why it's hard to hit Zach Gallon when he's on, watch the release point of the four seam fastball followed by the knuckle curve and then the changeup. We highlighted three of them because it's too hard to do five and it's coming out of his hands. Everything looks the same, right? You see the changeup fade away, fastball in the middle, knuckle curve down and in. And that's what a hitter's trying to pick up as soon as the ball is released out of his hand. Recognizing what is it what it is and at the same time trying to decide if they need to swing or not. Texas got to see him in game one obviously and now these hitters about to see him for a third time tonight. See if they can make an adjustment. Simeon and it's ball one. Texas five runs in the second yesterday five runs in the third. They're four for 47 as a team since. On this 1 0, Simeon chops it foul. Well, nothing about Zach so far has gotten anxious. As you see, this is what the offense did the night before. I told you when Zach was watching that game, you're like, hey, I don't want to see any more of that. You know, let me go get ready for my game and, and watch some different video. Well, he did and made the adjustments. He's ahead of Simeon 1 and 2. Yeah, we said we had a shot late in the game of him with the iPad. Looked like getting ready for, for tonight. And at that point, they were down by 100. That was the single most th important thing going on at that moment. Right. He's planning for this game, this must-win game. His 1-2 pitch. So you got to be careful with Simeon. He hammers stuff inside. Yeah, that was a changeup. It didn't get low enough. See him pushing the button there. He called the pitch right there. See what he goes with. On another one, two. It's curving the dirt. Give up three runs over five innings in game one. That's kind of been the standard gallon outing in this postseason. Troy Lavelle says that when he has that feel, that ball in his hand, when he knows that he's got it, that's when something special can happen. And it looks like he's had that feel tonight. His foot. Mm, dang. More like the shin. Yeah. Bottom of it. Ooh, ankle. You know, nothing phases this guy. He's played in every game this season. One of the most valuable guys in baseball. He's turned it around the last couple days. On a 2 2 from Gallon. Simeon swings and misses. It is six no hit innings from Zach Gallon. Nine base runners, 
five escapes from Nathan Avaldi and no score to the bottom of the six. Strike one on Alec Thomas. Well, this is Avaldi's last inning, and he'll pitch it like a ninth inning. No pitcher's given up a hit on a non fastball, which speaks to the secondary stuff that each guy has, and they'll be keeping a close eye on him because he's been grinding in this game. Thomas flies one down the line. Carter's over. Evan Carter out of room. Let's check in with Tom Verducci. Yeah, Nathan Ovaldi threw 85 pitches coming into this inning. 43 of those with a runner in scoring position. In five innings, that's more than he had thrown in any full game in the last two years. 43 pitches under pressure, zero mistakes. And ahead of Thomas 0 and 2 to open this sixth. And what that does it just mentally drains you right physically you train for things he's a freak on the mound I mean you know his lower half and everything he does prepares for this moment but you now feel like the game he walked into the sixth inning and I'm telling you it, he probably felt like it was the ninth inning and that's okay because if he gets through the sixth that team in the dugout is going to say unbelievable job we'll get it we'll get it from here Thomas stays alive that's not the first time that Evaldi has dug deep only to be let down by a lack of support. Of course, his most famous outing in the postseason. Game three of the World Series in 2018, where he goes six innings before Max Muncie ends it in the 18th. And relief. The defining moment of what is a great postseason career. Bounce back to him here. That's the first out of the six. Well, Rickwood Field, which is the oldest professional ballpark in the country, and the former home of the Birmingham Black Barons of the Negro Leagues, is going to be the site of a special regular season game between the Cardinals and the Giants next season, June 20th, on Fox. Baseball is in the midst of renovations there at this point. We're going to be there to broadcast the special event and honor the greatest living player from the Negro Leagues. Willie Mays, Longoria, fouls off the first pitch here. And Longoria's one for two. He scored on the line drive that was caught by Carter. He blooped one down the line that turned into a double. Oh and two, bottom falls out. Evaldi deals and gets a chase on another splitter. Two up and two down in the six. Uh, that ball disappears. That's the best one he's thrown all night. We were talking, John, about how that, that loss in 2018 is the moment that people talk about. The fact that it was a loss, that's the defining moment of his postseason career. That bugs him. And he's tried to rewrite the narrative on that postseason career. And this series thrived in the postseason, done nothing but win. Strike one on Perdomo. In fact, he's got a chance, if they could get him a run, to not only clinch the World Series, but in the process become the first pitcher ever to win five starts in one postseason. Is a one for Domo. Takes a ball. Well, when he needs to go to the next level, he's gone to the next level with that split finger. And there's the record postseason. That's incredible. The only loss that his team suffered is a game where they didn't score any runs. 1 1 pitch. Oh. Curve is in there, and it's 1 and 2. Trying to finish his day with his first clean, stress free inning. Top of the order in Carroll after Perdomo. Come on. Been a strange game you're going to have if Perdomo gets out here. You'll have Carroll leading off four different innings. The way the innings have gone and just the way the last outs have been made. Here comes a one-two pitch for Domo. Take strike three. 
Nathan Evaldi with the hardest fought six scoreless innings you'll see. Back after a word from your local Fox station. Nathan Evaldi, six innings, traffic in five of those innings, and then he finishes with a flurry, going one, two, three for the first time tonight. Yeah, incredible game. Uh, they needed it. His team hasn't really <laughs> lit up any of the statistical categories. And on the flip side, outside, you almost got to get the bullpen up, even though this man's dealing, because you got to make sure that this game, in any leverage point, stays scoreless. Corey Seager swings and misses as you just saw he is the first pitcher in World Series history with his team facing elimination to take a no hitter into the seventh. There have only been two no hitters in the 118 year history of the World Series one of them last year. Two shot foul one and two on Seager. Well if it was a regular season game it would be a lot more fun for each pitcher to do that but. Zach looks locked in and looks like he's been ready for the moment. The one two pitch. Ground ball base hit left field. Of course it's Corey Seager. It is always Seager. Breaks up the no hitter to start the seventh. Off the end of the bat through the vacated left side. Lead off man aboard in the seventh. Yeah, a little cue shot here. Not something he intended to do, but he will take it. He sure will take it. First hit of the day for the Texas Rangers. Carter, ball one. Rangers one went away from their first world championship. A gem from Avaldi fighting through the traffic to put him in this spot. Twenty one year old rookie Evan Carter pulls one into right center field and it's back to back hits cut off by Carroll Seager to third Carter to second he's in with a double the dam breaks here in the seventh. It's his third double against Zach Gallen in this World Series. Well, somebody had to pick up the slack, and we talked about in the open who's going to help out Seeger. Carter's doing his part right here, and the first real stress situation for Arizona now, of course, at the wrong time here in the seventh. Well, it seems like Arizona's had a guy up there with runner in scoring position all night. First chance for the Rangers in this spot. And it's a guy who's been good in these situations for Bruce Bochy this year. He's uh, doing his best Dusty Baker impression here, trying to change the mojo, going down to the other end of the dugout. It's worked so far in this seventh. Garver. Pops it back. Got to play strike one. You had your glove ready on that one, didn't I you? Did. Guy? I had a little bit of shadow coming our way. Infield pulled in here for Tori Lavello. With Adolis Garcia out, Garver is their top guy in RBIs in this postseason. Not an 0-1. Grounds one through! Texas takes the lead! Seager's in to score. Carter stopped at third. And after six innings without a hit, Three in a row here on the seventh. Right up the middle. The difference is so far for Texas. Obviously, you mentioned what their guy has done other than Garcia. Arizona has not put the ball in play in these crucial situations with less than two outs. And when they did, it was right to the drawn in infield. Still nobody out. Young to the plate.
chases a curve. And a slider that time. And it's a Rangers team that has just bludgeoned people with the power bats throughout this season. But here in game five, they've had the upper hand in clutch spots. Kevin Ginkle warms, got all those top arms down there for Torrey the Velo as soon as he wants them. And that's why I said normally I wouldn't say you, you got to get your bullpen going in a, in a game where a pitcher's throwing a no hitter. But you felt like everything that could happen so quick for Texas. It, now there is no time to get one of their arms super ready. This is what they do. You blink and they've changed it. They try to keep this unchanged, unbeaten this postseason when they score first. Carter at third, Garber at first, go two to the rookie, Josh Young. Tied him up with a fastball. One away. Great pitch right there. I mean, under the circumstances of everything going fast, pitch timer doesn't allow you to slow the game down, doesn't allow you to rethink. You just have to execute. He went up and in and got the big swing and miss, and that probably is it. And what an unbelievable job, even though he's on the wrong end of a one nothing game They're somehow on the losing end at this point taking the no hitter into the seventh inning three consecutive hits capped off by Mitch Garber's RBI single still though Zach Gallen in an elimination game take a bow Game five of the World Series. Nathan Avaldi and Zach Gallen, both awesome tonight. The watch party back in Arlington at Globe Life Field as the Rangers break through first. Three consecutive singles here in the seventh. Mitch Garber has him in front, one nothing. This is Kevin Ginkle on to face Nathaniel Lowe. Upstairs with a fastball. This is where the second run seems like you you're, you'll be up by five in a game at 0 0 the one breaks through the second one feels like it's a huge lead. Drops one in there for a strike Inkle pitched in nine games in this postseason he's not given up a run and he's just as good against lefties as he is righties power fastball and power slider He makes that shape it he can shape it it's got great top downward tilt it's a swing and miss pitch. He's home with a 1 1. Ball 2. two one. We got three big arms down there that have transformed this bullpen, along with Thompson and Seawald. Those guys have not pitched since the beginning of this series. Tony Lavello pulling the trigger right here. First and third, one gone, seventh inning. 2 1 pitch. Drop ball first. Walker coming home with it. And they've got Carter hung up. Moreno runs him back. Now Longoria chasing him down. It's Ginkle to get Carter. A little pickle here in the World Series in the second out of the seventh. I'll tell you what, Lowe reacted like he hit that ball off his foot. You see where he hadn't run? Watch this. He still hadn't run till late. <laughs> They get Carter with a well executed rundown. Now Bruce Bochy's out there talking with the first base umpire and the crew chief Bill Miller arguing the same thing that it looked like Lowe was. Just look weird. He got caught. You sound like the home plate umpire Brian Knight said foul. Yeah, maybe that's why he stopped. Because <laughs> he can't challenge it. So that had to be what Bruce Bochy was checking on. Me. All right, huge second out for Kevin Ginkle. First and second. One-nothing game, seventh inning. Here's Jonah Heim. Outside. Diamondbacks in the bottom of the seventh, top of the order coming up.
The 1 0 pitch. Heim. Inside. Takes ball two. Eight-year-old catcher in his third year with Texas. Breakout season for this guy. First and second, two gone, a 2-0 pitch. Fastball is hit way up there. Moreno's got room, and that's the inning. Rangers break through first. It's Mitch Garver with a single to center field to score. Guess who? Corey Seager. And one win from their first world championship. They've got the first run of game five. Back here with the man who gave the Rangers a one nothing lead Mitch Garver Mitch what changed against Zach Gallen that inning. He's had such good swing and miss stuff tonight. We, we you know when we're getting down to two strikes we we're chasing a lot so we're trying to get him early and when you get to two strikes he's got a battle. Mitch thanks a lot back to you Joe. It is Otis Chapman Kenny on to face Corbin Carroll who scores around and Hello. takes just low on 100. So here we go Johnny we've called this the Otis Chapman experience and to put that experience into a simple stat line. His last six innings he's given up seven hits and four walks but only two runs. Yeah he's just trying to get the two strikes he's tough to hit with two strikes. Here's one serve to left center field Carter's coming on he's got it and they keep Carroll off of the bases. Forty fourth postseason game that Aroldis Chapman has pitched in first season with Texas they got him back at the end of June from Kansas City he's had so many good moments in the postseason but he's had some legendary wrong moments on the wrong side of those highlights you always see playing Marte ball one tell Marte yet to extend his hitting streak. 20 games to open his postseason career, but he's walked twice. The 1 0 pitch. Ball two. on deck as Marte waits on a 3-0 does he take a green light nope he takes ball four and he walks for the third time tying on the board in the seventh and tonight's telecast is sponsored by the Chevy ZR2 family of trucks here's where other teams might get nervous and not want to run but here's the reason why you should 15 stolen bases only one caught stealing off of Chapman right team but will this be the right moment will it be the right guy over there he used to have great speed Some injuries through the years have diminished that I'm not saying it doesn't happen but uh, since I've been watching the game I've never seen back to back pickoff moves like two in a row right conservative lead over there Chapman to Moreno one ball no strikes. Arizona trying to send this series back to Texas. In order to come back in the series, they'll have to come back in this game. Biden's that lead a little bit. Chapman's 1 0. Strike one. Oh. Snapping a string of five straight misses. It's a Diamondbacks team that nobody saw coming. Even when they got in, still nobody saw them coming. Spores gets ready. Shocker after shocker. And they do it again here in game five. One one pitch. One ball, two strikes. This is where Chapman gets tough. I mean, the league is just not, you're just, you're just hard to get hits with two strikes on Chapman.
Now the one two. Got him with a fastball. Top of the zone 101. Two out in the seventh. 070 with two strikes. And how does the moment always seem to find Christian Walker? Sure does. <laughs> Your new pitcher is going to find him too. South Spores is ready to go. Walker's headed for the plate. And the right hander Spores will come on to face him. Tying run at first. Go ahead, run at the plate. Two gone, bottom of the seven. Sports if you're Christian Walker. If I'm Christian Walker, I'm sitting on a breaking ball because the stats say he's 80% throwing breaking ball first pitch. Here it comes. It is. Ball. Slider away, one ball, no shrug. That way, if you're sitting on it and it's in the zone, you can crush it. That one he recognized off the plate, but a high likelihood he's going to throw a majority of breaking balls. So far in the postseason, 097, just facing him, period. Marte at first, tying run, go ahead, run at the plate, one on pitch, spiked in there. Well, it's clouded by the two big mistakes he's made over the last two games, but Christian Walker's gotten his back going. He's one for two of the walk today. He's four for his last seven. Struggles with fastballs, top of the zone. On this 2 0 pitch, Walker. Got that fastball up, sent it foul, 2 and 1. Josh Spores had a 5 and a half ERA during the regular season, sub 1 in the postseason. His 2 1 pitch. Walker lines it to center field. Tavares is there. And how about that? They get a walk against Chapman, but no runs. It's another man stranded for Arizona. Phoenix on our drone cam presented by T Mobile. Game five of the World Series, the last game to be played in this ballpark this year. It's Leo to Tavares, laying a bunt down. Kevin Ginkle gives way to Evan Longoria, whose bare hand pickup is good enough to get him. Heck of a play right there. Well, heck of a play and a heck of a detour for Ginkle because he tried to say he was going to catch this. Watch this. Perfectly placed. He's got it. He's got it until he doesn't. And Longoria makes a great play despite the pitcher getting in his way. And a big first out. A one nothing game in the fifth inning. Or in the eighth inning. Game five. Jankowski takes ball one. And this Rangers team that has used the offense, top offense in the American League, to get back into the postseason and has crushed teams with those bats during the postseason. Six outs away in a one nothing game from finishing off their first world title. There is so much irony here, I can't even tell you. They lost the last game of the regular season, one to nothing, to set them on this journey. If they were able to kind of redeem themselves to win a World Series one to nothing, it will go as um, improbable as their journey to win this game one to nothing would be incredible. And if they hang on, they would finish off a perfect postseason on the road. They're 10 and 0 in October on the road. Also, crazy when you consider that it was on the road where they blew the division. Three one on Jankowski. It's a team that two years ago lost 102 games. And even last year, they lost 94. They finished 38 games behind Houston last year. It's not like they were close. Outside. That's a walk for Jankowski and a one on base runner. 63rd year of the franchise, 52nd in Texas, one of six teams without a world championship. Second. 
And it's Bruce Bochy in his first season as the manager that has him on the doorstep of it. A ball on Simeon. Of course, you know Rangers fans are not going to celebrate until that last out is made, until that last strike is recorded. Ball one strike. Well, on the flip side, I mean, these last two games couldn't be more polar opposite for the D-backs. Weren't in the game at all yesterday. Scored some runs late. And then you can't dream of a better elimination game to have out of your starter to give up one run. And offensively, just didn't get the big hit. You've got two innings to try to muster that up, and it's going to get increasingly tougher with the bullpen arms that the Rangers have left. There's a the base hit the other way for Simeon. Jankowski stops at second. And now you've got Cole Seeger coming up in a 1 0 game in the eighth inning with a couple ducks on the pond. Corey Seeger in this postseason, an absolute tear. He's homered in four of his last five games. Game one of the World Series, biggest swing of this postseason. Tied it in the ninth inning against Seawall. Game three, homered against Fox in a three to one win. That was the difference. And then in game four, part of the onslaught. Six World Series home runs for guys trying to join Reggie Jackson as the only position players to win the World Series MVP more than once. It's amazing. <laughs> To know you got a bullseye on you and to deliver even though you have a bullseye on you is so special of a player and not every player does that. I mean not every great player who has a great regular season can come in and continue that. And his buddy Marcus Simeon just set the all time record for plate appearances in a season. That will happen when you play this deep into the year and you do not take a day off because he has not. Seeger and the Rangers looking for insurance leading game five one nothing. Fouls off the first pitch. How many good pitches is he going to see here? Well, the pressure of making a great pitch, knowing you can't make a big bad pitch, it goes into the pitcher's head. Down, he's out. Up, he's going to win. And that's the bottom line. You make that slider pitch down, he swings over the top. You leave it in the zone, he's going to hit it hard. Trying to break this one open. Oh. Fouls it off. Couple good pitches, 0 and 2. And you can chase that height right there. You can chase that height and go just an absolute two inches lower and bounce it right in front of the catcher and there's a good chance he could go after that pitch. Seager takes high. One, two. Cold blooded intensity of Corey Seager. Two runners aboard in the eighth on a one two pitch. Takes high in the count evens. Now what? See, I, I, I just, again, they, they took a pitch right now, and if they start that slider right there, it's going to be hard for him to lay off of it. But they went up, 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 and changed his eye level. And see, that pitch right there would have had a better impact after the two that he fouled off. But because you changed the eye level so far up, it then gives him a reset to say, oh, that ball's starting low. And that's why I thought they missed an opportunity after two straight. From 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. Seeger takes okay. ball four, and the bases are loaded. If tonight's game ends in a walk-off, which Diamondbacks fans are hoping for, Capital One's going to donate $1,000 to the Jackie Robinson Foundation as part of the Capital One walk-off program. To date, they've donated more than $750,000 to the foundation to support its programs and initiatives. From Seeger to Carter, bases loaded in the eighth. Oh, One ball, no strikes. Nowhere to put Carter. He's a very patient, disciplined hitter. He's reached in all 17 games here in his first postseason. Just two months removed from double A. 
That's on two and oh. Seawald's getting ready. Rangers hoping it's too little too late down there. Infield's pulled in. 2-0 comes home. And there is strike one. A single and two walks have loaded him up for the Rangers. On this 2-1, Carter takes strike two. Incredible job getting back in the count with two great sinkers. Look at the movement on that two-seam fastball. Comes back to strike him out. Now this time he went off the height of the fastball and threw a breaking ball and got a relatively guy that doesn't swing and miss a lot in the zone to swing and miss in a big strikeout. Well, the Rangers, John, have lived the next man up cliche all year. The next man up in the cleanup spot is this guy, Garver. In for Adolis Garcia to this spot in the order. And he's driven in the lone run of game five. Now he finds himself up there with the bases loaded trying to crack it open. Mitch Garver takes a strike. It's one one. Well, he's patient, and he takes what the pitcher gives him, meaning he's not trying to overswing and hit a grand slam every single time. He went up the middle last time, patient with the bases loaded, looking for a particular area, and he'll let the barrel fly when he gets it. One ball and two strikes. Kevin Ginkle on the verge of an escape. Pitch of the night. You don't want to go to three and two. Cracked his bat. Roll it ashore. Perdomo's there. Kevin Ginkle's out of the bases loaded jam. during this World Series. Check out the largest selection of authentic jerseys, caps, t-shirts, and more at MLBShop.com. Here we go to the bottom of the eighth. Texas won. Arizona nothing. Tommy Pham leads off. Texas leads this series three games to one. The one win from their first world championship. Well, this is where you start thinking they're not ready for the season to end. Find a way, any way, to scratch a run and maybe two, but that's the mindset you got to have if you're Arizona. Fan takes high, 2 and 0. Oh. Guriel and Thomas to follow. And if there's ever a time to sit on a fastball right here, it'd be Tommy Fam looking middle, middle in. He's got the power, obviously, to hit a home run and tie it up. The best guy in this World Series at the plate in the eighth. And he's ahead, 3-0. Pitch. Took it on the inside corner, settles back in. Spores comes home. Fan sends it foul, and it's three and two.
Here's the payoff. Fans down on strikes. After getting ahead 3 0, Spores finds it and strikes him out. Well, they got it. A pitch right there on 3 0, and then missed a pitch. And then this ball runs in and ties him up. That was a pitch he wanted to hit. And out Scurriel, who had a home run in yesterday's game. Grounds on left side. Seeger's got it. Steps into the throw. And there are two out in the eighth inning. MLB Together is baseball's new platform, embodying the sports philanthropic contributions and mental wellness efforts by teams, players, and the league. To learn more, go to MLBTogether.com. They're guaranteed to get Corbin Carroll to the plate again. He'd be due up third in the ninth. Alec Thomas to the plate here. Big curveball fouled into the glove strike one. Thomas hit nine home runs during the regular season. He's been one of the surprise sluggers in this postseason with four. On this 0 1. Sharply through. Tying on a board. Alec Thomas and all his speed on with two gone in the eighth. This ball was tattooed. Another breaking ball, but he goes down and just laces it by up the middle. And now almost, almost think that steal on the base here would be huge. Pinch hitters coming up here. John Paven Smith is going to pinch hit for Evan Longoria. He had seven at bats over the final three months of the regular season. He was in Triple A the rest of the time. A surprise addition to the postseason roster that had one a play, one plate appearance over the first two rounds, and then he was great off of the bench in the championship series. They're going to pull the trigger on him here. They've sent him up there a few times, but he's been countered right out of the game before he's even hit. We saw one pitch out, and the Rangers, I believe, were the one to show the pitch out. I wonder if that'll be a play here with Thomas at first and two outs. Find out in just a second after this quick word from Evan Williams Bourbon. Reach for a fan favorite, Evan Williams 1783 small batch. When bourbon's done right, people notice. The close of the clerk has started to warm with two gone in the eighth. Trying to get an inning plus from Josh Spores. Two out single from Alec Thomas is given a chance to Paven Smith. Not going. Ball one. Smith was the seventh pick of the draft a few years ago. Debuted as one of their top prospects. It's been a disappointment first few years. Could make his name right here. Oh. On the corner, one ball, one strike. Thomas a little bit of lead this time. Not going. Cracked foul. One and two. Two strikes. The chances go up. Breaking ball. Still not going. Smith checks his swing and a ball in the dirt. Heim keeps it close. That's what I thought. I thought they would go on the two strike pitch, anticipating a breaking ball, but playing it a little bit safer here with a 2 2 count now and two outs. Tori Lavelle said if you could pick one guy with a season on the line to have at the plate, it's Cattell Marte. If they were caught trying to steal, you wouldn't get a guarantee that you'd have him in the ninth. This at bat's completed. It'd be Perdomo, Carroll, and Marte next. Not going still. It's 
stays at two and two. I mean, I get it in theory, right? You got a two run homer opportunity right here. And you don't want to waste that that, that chance of taking that out of play. Smith going to take his time here. And shooting for Evan Longoria. Two gone in the eighth inning. Arizona trying to keep this dream alive. Bradford has joined the clerk. Another 2 2 from Josh Spores. Paven Smith. Clear takes strike three. Backdoor breaking ball from Josh Spores. Sends game five to the ninth inning. The Texas Rangers three outs away from a world championship. Paul Seawald is on to pitch for the Diamondbacks. Josh Young greets him with a bullet into center field on the first pitch that he throws. This is Seawald's first outing since his blown save in game one when Seeger took him deep. Well, no stress for the first six innings, and the last three have been big time stress for the Diamondbacks. It's flipped. The Rangers now putting all the pressure and getting it closer and closer to breaking it open. It's low. outside ball one. And Seawald had been perfect in save opportunities in this postseason prior to that. Ninth inning in Texas, game one. Oh, it's a little bit low, and it's 2 0. Oh. There's a new third baseman after Evan Longoria was pinch hit for by Paven Smith. Rivera steps into that spot, plays third. Arizona in the bottom of the ninth. They've got Perdomo, Carroll, and Marte coming up. It's 9 1 and 2. Base it the other way. Back to back hits to open this ninth. Got behind, came in with a fastball, and like Lowe has done really most of this series, trying to shoot the ball the other way. And he's found success in left field. Two on, nobody out against Seawall. Rangers are saying, This is who we are. Gotta have the offense show up. And this is gonna be the clincher. Hot shot in the center field. Three consecutive hits in the ninth. The ball gets by. It's all the way to the track. It goes all the way to the wall and two runs score. Heim to third. It's three to nothing, Texas. Well, you're going to watch this ball. It gets up the middle and it kind of zigzags. And then right there, he took his eyes just off of it, thought he had it in the glove. Correct. Tremendous job by Carroll, not assuming, and he just misses the ball. And in an what? otherwise perfect postseason of defense, the air yesterday on Walker led to five unearned runs, and an air here on Thomas has opened the door for potential big inning for Texas. Looking for the knockout blow. It's Tavares. No balls and two strikes. What an unbelievable reversal. Living on the edge for six innings. Avaldi, perfect. Gallon, perfect for six innings. And then the pressure mounted from the seventh on, three runs. Infield in here. Nobody out in the ninth inning. Seawall to Tavares. Fouled into the glove. That is strike three, one away. Made a visit coming here from Brent Strong. 
Another look at this ball just sneaking under Thomas's glove. He's been rock solid out there this season. And Bruce Bochy cracking a smile over there. This close to his fourth World Series ring. After three years away, signed a three-year contract. We mentioned earlier he was starting to get the itch, wanted to get back into the game, but as he told the Rangers the first day of spring training, the team gathered around him for his first message and that slow, low delivery of his. He said, boys, I'm not coming out of retirement to lose. I wouldn't be here if I didn't know that this team was ready to win right now. Now, Bruce would never say this, but one of the reasons they were ready to win right now is because they had him now. Game-changing manager, legendary manager. Runner with third, one away. Travis Jankowski. Rounds one to short. Backhand Perdomo, keeping the runner put two away. Led the Rangers to their first World Series appearance since the heartbreak of 2011. This one's incredible. 14 of his last 15 postseason series he has won. And he tries to join an incredible list. Casey Stengel, Joe McCarthy, Connie Mack, Walter Alston, Joe Torre. With a win tonight, Bruce Bochy would join that list. It's a strike on Simeon. That's a list of the greatest skippers in baseball history. It's a list of the only guys with four rings. Bochy trying to join that group. Under at third, two out. Here's an 0-1 to Simeon. In the air to left center field. Guriel's back. It is gone! Texas on the verge! It's a four spot. It would be a fitting final touch to this run for the Rangers. And now Seager, strike one. Well, they've collectively, we've talked about it. They've got up off the mat. Every punch, every scenario had their star player in this series besides Seeger get hurt. Scherzer got up off the mat. They've been relentless. Check swing from Seeger. Left side of the infield. Rivera's got no play. And Seeger, who broke up the no hitter in the seventh, has an infield hit right here. Marcus Simmons found it just in time. He sure did. And he's hit two big home runs. And that's now the 13th three-run inning. Three or more. 13 times in the postseason. Just think about that. Carter takes a strike. And when you see some of these scores, and if you don't scroll down and look at the innings, you think they're just scoring in a bunch of innings. Two innings tonight. Three innings yesterday. One inning the day before. That's it. That's not a lot. It's just so hard to hold them down for a full game. And they break through late here. They get a run in the seventh. They've gotten four in the ninth after they didn't have a hit through six. Held down for 60 some years. Held down for six innings in game five. They've broken through in game five. Have they broken through in their franchise's history? No team's ever won a World Series game after having no runs on no hits through six innings. No team's ever gone 11-0 on the road in the postseason. No Rangers team has ever won at all. The 2-2 to Carter. Thank you. 
takes off a flare and a miss but a fourth spot in the top of the ninth to the bottom of the ninth we go Bruce Bochy and the Texas Rangers three outs away from a World Series title Team Mobile, a fourth spot for the Texas Rangers in the top of the ninth inning has broken open game five. They are three outs away from a World Series championship. And Josh Spore is staying in the game here. For the Diamondbacks, 9-1-2 and two, in a night full of missed opportunities. Gerardo Perdomo takes a strike. Well, their base runners in seven of the eight innings, but they've gone 0 for 8, 0 for 9 with runners in scoring position. No oh. balls and two strikes. Spores is 0-2. One, two. Boy, did the Rangers need a hot reliever, and he got hot at the right time. He started the series in Baltimore. He came out throwing, eh, walking a couple guys, got a little off, and then he has been locked in ever since. A big reason why Texas is winning. Their bullpen was basically battered coming in. They needed winning formula scenarios. That means pitch deep in the game, which they got, and then their top three were able to handle the rest of the game. Now they got guys like Gray and Heaney, Dunning and Bradford. One, two. Three, strike three, and one gone in the ninth. And this season-long problem has transformed into one of the defining strengths of this Rangers team. This bullpen, two outs away from finishing the job. They hadn't been to the playoffs in seven years. Six consecutive losing seasons, including 102 just two years ago. And they lost 94 last year. Ball one on Carroll. Hadn't been to the World Series since the back-to-back -back trips in 2010, 2011. 63rd year of the franchise, 52nd year in Texas. Carroll pops it up. Heim is back behind the plate. He's got it. And once again, the Rangers are one out away. Think about it. If the Diamondbacks were to win the World Series, most improbable team ever. But the improbable journey of the Texas Rangers, even though they were a great team for a long part of the season in first place, we documented that route. They had to beat the defending champs without winning a home game. They were down three games to two. Now they're one out away from winning the World Series. Cattell Marte takes a little bit low. A handful of times throughout this year where they looked finished, but every time, just when you thought that they were done, they picked themselves up and stood tall. For 12 years, they've waited for another chance to get the last out, to get the last strike. One ball, one strike. Got Marte. Took down 99 wins, took down over 100 wins, took down the defending champs, and all on the road. Spores with a 1 1. There's strike two, and again, Texas is one strike away. It took 35 years for this franchise to get to the playoffs. It took them a half century to get to the World Series. Can they finish it off? Two balls and two strikes on Marte. And their 63rd season.
so long to heartbreak. Hello World Series for the Texas Rangers champions in 2023. And a guy that is about to join Mr. October himself as the only two-time World Series MVP position players ever. Corey Seager reacts to the last out. Marcus Simeon, the other of the high-priced free agents, the guys that they brought in to bring them back to this place. And in two short years, they've delivered. In one short year, he's delivered. Bruce Bochy has his fourth World Series ring. So amazing. Beat up before the postseason started. And then Evaldi now five wins in the postseason. What a moment and what a year for the Texas Rangers. And Adolis Garcia who had so many incredible moments that when you watch the reel of this postseason run you'll you'll hear his name over and over you'll see his smile and his swing over and over and the surprise star of the bullpen Josh Spores Josh Spores on the mound for the last out of the Texas Rangers first World Series win he got hot Montgomery got hot Evaldi got hot they had two starters carry the freight they had a bunch of guys fill in the gaps down to the celebration, Tom Verducci. Thanks, Joe. Jonah, you just caught the last out of the first World Series title for the Texas Rangers. Describe that feeling. Man, that's one of the coolest feelings in my life, other than having my kids and getting married, of course. But, man, this is what you work your whole life for, and we, we accomplished our goals, and I'm so, I'm so proud of this team. You lost on the final day of the season, got shut out to lose a division title. You have not lost a road game since. How do you explain how this team played through this postseason, especially on the road? I mean, I think we took we uh, we took that to heart, and um, we weren't going to let up until the last that was made. Like I said, I'm so proud of this team. We we fought through adversity, injuries, and we came out on top. And I don't know what else to say. Got one word for Nathan Avaldi. Special. He's a special human. Great, great individual, and. Even better ball player. Enjoy it. Congrats. Appreciate it. Thank you. Back to you, Kenny. Thanks, Tom. We're here with Marcus Simeon. Marcus, you've had a long, distinguished career, and now you are a World Series champion. What do those words mean to you? It's just emotional. Uh, everything I've ever worked for is for this moment. Um, kind of crazy game. We didn't no hit till you know six or whatever it was. Uh, Gallon was unbelievable tonight, but. We came through once we got once Corey got the first hit everybody kind of woke up. Um, pitching was unbelievable. Evaldi spores. Chappie you know we didn't use the clerk. We didn't use the clerk spores close it out. Um, and just unbelievable feeling your home run circling the bases Marcus you showed more emotion than you usually show. What was going through your mind. I mean this is the biggest moment you know the World Series. Put up five runs, four runs in the eighth inning, be up five nothing going into the ninth inning after we'd be a no hit. Um, just felt so good. Just looked over at the bench, screamed. It's just an unbelievable feeling. I know I keep saying that word, but just to run the bases knowing that we're that much closer felt great. Marcus, congratulations. Thank you. Over to Tom. Josh Spores, you got the last out of the Rangers' first World Series title. What did it feel like to be on that mound for that last pitch? Surreal. I mean, the way the uh, offense gave me those extra runs, I know Pete goes a little sore. So when they scored those extra runs, I just felt that much better. You know, we were that much closer. Um, it just said, try to stay calm and, you know, just try to get it out by out. Did Bochi or Mike Maddox say anything to you before that last inning? He just asked me how I felt, and he said, you're inning. So I said, all right, let's do it. Let's finish it. This team went undefeated on the road in the postseason. What makes it so special, Josh? Uh, you know, we go into hostile territory everywhere we went, and, you know, we just stayed calm, did our job, and, you know, played the way, the way we've played all year. Congratulations. Enjoy it. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Here's Ken Rosenthal. Thanks, Tom. Nathan, you got after 
out of jam after jam after jam. How did you do it? I don't know. Uh, you know, I kind of joked around. I don't know how many rabbits I have in my hat left. Uh, I mean, I didn't really help myself out in some of the situations. And then other times, you know, they put together quality at bats and were able to find the hole. And I mean, a lot of the credit goes to Jonah back there behind the plate. He called a great game. We were on the same page for the most part. And, you know, we were able to come out on top. That was the main thing. Your postseason record is remarkable. What changes for you this time of year? Uh, I'm not really sure. I think it's a just do or die mentality. Uh, I try to prepare a lot mentally, just the positive mind thinking, and then just going out there and attack, attack, attack. Um, I didn't really do a great job tonight, you know what I mean, in attacking the zone. And, you know, there were a few times that lead off walks and things like that, but our defense, incredible again tonight. Corey was great over there uh, short. And then our offense is able to come through there towards the end for us. You signed with this team coming off a 68 win season. What made you want to be a Texas Ranger? I mean, the offense, there's the success is there. You know what I mean? I feel like we needed pitching. See why when they reached out in the offseason, they said that that was going to be the main thing that they were going to prioritize. Uh, you know, they talked about how great that the offense had been last year and the year before. And, you know, I fully believe that pitching wins championships. And uh, for us to go out there tonight, you know, battle tonight, sports came in, threw the ball great. Everybody else tonight, it was an incredible matchup. All the way there till the end, and we were able to break through. And uh, I mean, that that was why. Nathan, congratulations. Enjoy it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Joe, back to you. And along with Nathan Avaldi, Jordan Montgomery, two guys that weren't even in the organization a year ago. For Montgomery, he wasn't in it until this summer. Help him go 11 and 0 on the road this postseason. It is a record, and Chris Young, the architect of it, along with John Daniels. Those guys executed their vision. They got the players to buy into that vision. Said when he sat down with Corey Seager, when he sat down with Marcus Simeon, he said, do you like a challenge or does it scare you? Do you want to be part of it or are you afraid? If you want to do something special, if you want to do something the Texas Rangers have never done, sign up. Come join us. And two years later, two years after that, franchise changing 24 hours where they got Seager and Simeon, that comes to fruition. They've got a title. Down to Kenny again. Thanks, Joe. Nathaniel, you came here. You were a Texas Ranger for several years in the bad times. What does it mean to you to be part of the first Texas Rangers team to win a World Series? It's such a treat, man. It's such a treat. It's so hard, so hard to get emotionally invested in some teams because of the business aspect of things. But, you know, we got such a good group here. So outside of, of players, we got good people. And it feels like we have a championship group. And we really did a great job of finishing here on the road. Gallon, six no-hit innings Amazing. to start this game. Yes. What were you guys telling yourselves in the dugout? We just got to wait him out, man. He's really good, and he had his good stuff there at the beginning. He was really working at the bottom, and his stuff was playing great. But we finally got to him. You know, Corey breaks it up, and Evan, Evan sends him around the bags, and we get a chance to cash in on a run. But scoring there in the ninth inning was so big, we take the pressure off the pen and get to take that thing home, and it was a special game. 11-0 and 0 on the road this postseason. Nathaniel, how do you explain that? We just got a group of winners. Well, you know, when, when the bus drivers tell driving slow, we tell them, hey, man, you know, you're driving a group of winners. So we believe it through and through. And, you know, maybe we struggle it at home, but we got it done on the road. We got a special group. Thank you, Nathaniel. Congratulations. Thank Over to you. Tom. Thanks, KB. Mike Maddox, you've seen Nathan Avaldi come up big, but describe the effort he gave tonight with it, so much traffic behind him in a 0-0 game. He was a traffic cop tonight, but it shows the, his mettle. I mean, first inning, got his back to the wall, gets out of it, bases loaded, gets out. I mean, he didn't have a one, two, three inning until the sixth. So uh, that's why we love Nate, man. He's he's a winner. What was his key for getting out of trouble time after time? Uh, never gave in. Kept trying to make his pitches. Used their aggressiveness against him in certain situations. It's been a long time for you to get to this point. What does this mean to you, Mike? Yes. Can't describe it. It's the best. Well earned. Enjoy it. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations. Back to you, KB. Yeah, Mike Maddox, his way for his World Series ring matches that of this franchise. Mike was born in 1961, the year the Washington Senators were born, and he and they put an end to the waiting tonight. Five to nothing the final in game five. Rangers win the series four games to one. Coming up after the break, we'll have the Commissioner's Trophy given to the world champion Rangers and the Willie Mays Most Valuable Player Award presented by Chevrolet. 
The Rangers have done it. Champions in 2023. Series. Two years after losing more than 100 games, they joined this company, the 1914 Braves and the Miracle Mets, the only teams to win the World Series two years removed from 100 losses. Incredible stuff. Quite a celebration they're going to have down in the middle of it, our guy Kevin Burkhart. Joe, thanks very much. Here with Commissioner Rob Manfred. And ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever, your world champion, Texas Rangers. Majority owner Ray Davis, COO Neil Liebman is here, Executive VP, General Manager Chris Young, Manager Bruce Bochy, and the rest of the Texas Rangers. And now, the fun part, we get to present the Commissioner's Trophy. 63 years is a long time to wait, but the Texas Rangers are World Series champions. It's my distinct pleasure to present the Commissioner's Trophy to Ray Davis, Neil Liebman, and Chris Young. Ray, you came on board, you bought this team, and you went to the World Series twice. You were oh so close. You had to wait a little bit, but how good does that wait feel right now? You know, this franchise has waited 63 years to pick up that trophy. I can't tell you what it means to the city of Arlington, the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. We're just thrilled to death. What do you say to these fans here tonight? Well, thank you for all your support for your patience. You know, we, I'm a man of faith, and I've had the hope that we would hold up this trophy one day. We always had that vision, and we never gave up that hope, and here we are. Yeah, congratulations. Let's bring in the guy who helped make this happen, Chris Young. See why. Boy, am I happy for you. You you come home, you're you're born and raised in Dallas, grew up there, you became an athlete there in Dallas, and you took this job for this exact reason to bring this trophy home. Tell me how it all unfolded. Well, Kevin, I gotta start by congratulating the Arizona Diamondbacks. It's a classy organization. They have tremendous leadership and Mike, Tory, uh, their front office, it's a tremendous organization. They deserve a ton of credit for a great season. Uh, secondly, I want to give credit to our entire organization, our, starting with our ownership, Ray and Neil, a good friend and mentor, John Daniels, who started this and set out the vision. Um, our players, this is, they did this. They have this trophy, but we have this trophy because of them. They made this happen. They deserve this. I love them all. Bruce Bochy, unbelievable. What a Hall of Fame manager came back and led us to this. And of course, most importantly, our fans. They've waited a long time for this. The wait is over. They deserve this. Thank you. Congrats, CY. Thank you. Bruce Bochy. Take hold of that. So take us back when your guy Chris gave you a phone call and just kind of asked if you wanted to get back to managing again. You think that was the, the right answer to say yes? Oh my goodness, uh, it's unreal. I was sitting on a recliner there in Nashville and just enjoying myself when he called me. And I tell you what, I, I, I'm so honored to ride with these guys. Uh, it, they they inspire me with the, how resilient they've been. But to get this call, be part of this, I know how blessed I am. I can't thank these guys enough. Resiliency has been a name of this team, right? I mean, you've been road warriors. You didn't lose a game on the road. It started obviously in Seattle, and you go through Tampa and Baltimore and Houston, and here you are. How did you manage to play so great on the road this entire postseason? Man, I tell you, it's it's amazing how they came together. And I, I go back to Seattle. We lost a tough game there, the last game, trying to win this division, and they could have got down. They went in Tampa, 
put that beside uh, beside them and uh, just got after it. And it's incredible to do what they did. And that's what we talked about, how tough a group this is, how resilient they are. Again, they inspired me. Thank you, guys. One more, Bruce. Let's, let's ask you about Nathan. He's been so good in these big games. You knew that. You know you had confidence in him. And once again, he delivered. What was most impressive about him tonight? Well, that's Nathan. I mean, that's, that's his resume. We had the right guy out there. We knew it. And we had all the confidence in the world in him. He's done it before. We knew he'd do it again. And for him to go out there and match against a really tough guy, uh, he, it's incredible what he did for us. Number four, raise that thing above your head, Bruce. Enjoy it. Bruce Bochy, ladies and gentlemen, there we go. And now we have one more piece of hardware to hand out. The Willie Mays Most Valuable Player Trophy presented by Chevrolet. Is there any doubt? Corey Seager. That's all yours. How about this? You're the fourth player ever to win two World Series MVPs, Corey. How did you do it? Um, you know, just behind this team, you know, it's a resilient group like they were saying. You know, we're just... Just happy to be a part of this team and how we grinded and played through it. You know, it's just it's awesome right now. When you came here, you came here for this person. But take take me through the vision that you talked about when you came here and what you hope to do and to bring this trophy here. Yeah, you know, it's a lot of credit to them. A lot of credit to CY, a lot of credit to our ownership, you know, on having a, a view and bringing in people. And it's just it's truly incredible, you know, to have this group behind us and to be not, or to be world champs now, man. It's, it's crazy. The most impressive thing about these guys standing with you is what? Um, Cards? <laughs> yes, cards. <laughs> hey, whatever works, right? Yeah, no, but really, you know, the resilience of this group is just the fight, man. The fight's what it is. Hey, uh, uh, for the second time, you've got this MVP trophy. Enjoy it. Congratulations, Thank Corey. You. Thank you. Corey Seager, the MVP. <laughs> and one more time, ladies and gentlemen, the world champion, Texas Rangers. Joe, let's go back to you. All right, Kevin. And so Seeger joins Reggie Jackson, the only position players in World Series history to have multiple MVP trophies. Seeger did it with the Dodgers in 2020. He does it with the Rangers this year. There was, as Kevin said, not too much doubt about it. Of course, Reggie's got a few more rings. Corey's got to catch up to. But as far as individual performances and a couple fall classics, Incredible what this guy's done, the MVP of the Champion Rangers in 2023. The five nothing, the final score here in game five, and there's a lot to go over. Plenty to recap for Kevin Burkhardt and the boys. They've got the post game show coming up.